Apparently, the children of Israel got trapped there with Pharaoh's army closing in the gap behind them. At the south end of this beach, many years ago, Ron and his sons found a pillar, and they dragged it out and scrubbed it off, and they could only read a few words on it, mostly pretty eroded, but they found another pillar just like it on the other side in Arabia, in Saudi Arabia, and the pillar said this was erected by King Solomon to commemorate the crossing of the Red Sea. Hmm. The maps of the depth of the water there are interesting. There's called the Elat Deep. I went uh, swimming in uh, and went down to visit uh, Elat, uh, Israel, where it comes down and touches the, the Red Sea here. Um, it's about 5,000 feet deep in here in the, in the Gulf of Aqaba, except for this one spot where it's only 900 feet deep. There's a natural underwater land bridge. It's about eight miles wide and only 900 feet deep. A um, friend of mine, Aaron, went over there and said, look, folks, this is absolutely correct. Uh, the bath Israeli bathymetric chart uh, says this is only 900 feet deep here. And some people are criticizing Ron Wyatt, saying it's not true. There's not a bridge there. Yes, there is an underwater land bridge. So Ron and his sons went out there scuba diving out as deep as they could go, 150 feet or so, and found chariot wheels with no chariots attached and chariots with no wheels attached. They found rib cages of humans, rib cages and hooves of animals that are uh, fossilized, not fossilized, but covered with coral. You can go to the museum in Cornersville, Tennessee, south of Nashville, about 50 miles, and I think it's exit 27, and there's a converted gas station right there, which is the Wyatt Museum, and see these things for yourself. See the, the horse hoof all dried up and uh, dehydrated. The 18th uh, dynasty in Egypt is the only one to use the eight-spoke, six-spoke, and four-spoke chariot wheels, and all of those are found at the bottom. On the right side over here, you see a mountain called Jabal al-Laws, which means Mountain of Laws, and that is Mount Sinai. The Bible says in Galatians 4, Sinai is in Arabia. Why are they looking for it in the Sinai Peninsula? It's not even there. It can't be. Apparently, this is Mount Sinai, um, black on top. Whether that's from the burning or not, I don't know, but it could be that it actually burned and melted the rocks on top. At the bottom of this mountain, there's a, a bunch of rocks with a, this one has a calf drawn on it. They think probably this is the altar they built with the calf. Exodus 20, God told them to smite the rock and water would come out for the people to drink. Most Bible pictures uh, show a little stream of water coming out. They had several million people plus their animals. They're not going to feed them with a stream of water like that. It's not going to work. It had to be water gushing out of there. Actually, it had to be a river. There's this big boulder you can see here in the background. This is a, as big as a five-story building. It is split right in half, completely in half. And on both sides, there are erosion marks. This may be the rock that Moses smote, and the water came gushing out of both sides. A river flowed out and watered everybody. Okay, people say, what about Sodom and Gomorrah? Where's that at? Well, the Lord said in Genesis 19, he would rain upon Go Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone. Brimstone is burning sulfur. If you look at this map of the Dead Sea, you can see there are five spots. Zeboam, Adma, Gomorrah, Zo Sodom, and Zoar. These apparently are where the cities were, of those five cities that were burned. Uh, when I was on top of Masada in uh, March of 2002, I went over to Israel. You can look down from the top of Masada and see a square, which is apparently where Sodom was. The city's all burned. You don't even tell it's a city until you get uh, very far away from it. It's mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter 29, and mentioned in Genesis chapter 14, about the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma, Zeboam, and these guys got in trouble and, you know, basically uh, the Lord had to judge their cities here. So apparently those are the five cities that burned. If you go to get up real close to this thing, you realize, actually, if you look at the walls, those look like just ash cliffs, but the closer you get, the more you realize, man, that's, that's a city that was burned. And the bricks have actually turned to ash. Peppered in that ash, there are thousands, actually millions of sulfur balls. I've got some right here on the table. These are actually pieces of 99% sulfur. The outside is kind of a white color, but if you break it open, it's a little more yellow inside. It kind of, apparently it burned itself out. Golf ball size, variety of size. It literally rained sulfur on that city. In the ash, which is apparently burned brick, there are little indentations where the sulfur balls are. The one fell out of here. There's one piece of one over here. This is a piece of ash from that area, and many folks, including myself, think this is the actual Sodom and Gomorrah, and we have the physical evidence for it. It literally burned the cities to ash. This may be what's called a, a, a ziggurat or something to guard the uh, opening 
uh, at the city. And Ron Wyatt and Richard Reeves spent a lot of time over there and are very convinced, as am I, that this is Sodom and Gomorrah. Next question. People say, don't wisdom teeth prove evolution? <laughs> no. It is true that about 60% of the population has trouble with their wisdom teeth. They have to get them removed or they become infected or impacted or something like that because their jaw is not big enough to grow in. The fact of the matter is this is not evidence for evolution. This is evidence man used to be bigger and live longer and develop more slowly in the past. If before the flood people lived to be 900 and they develop slowly and you're a kid till you're 40 and you're a teenager till you're 60 and you get married when you're 80, um, life was just slower and more relaxed. They would be bigger. By the time you're 20, it's time for that last tooth to come in to fill in your jaw, which is still growing. Jack Cowazzo, the dentist from New Jersey, has an excellent book dealing with this topic a little bit. It's called Buried Alive, uh, showing how that the human face never stops growing and people living to be two to three hundred would need this wisdom tooth because they would be so much bigger. So the Neanderthals actually use their wisdom teeth. They show signs of wear on them. The Neander Neanderthals probably were people living to be 200 years old. Get the book Buried Alive if you want more on that. Next question. People say, Brother Hovind, in your seminar and in your debate, sometimes you're sarcastic with the atheists. I know, and I'm sorry. Okay, that's just a personality quirk, I guess. I'm working on it. But in my over 30 years of ministry, I've seen thousands of lives changed by the teachings on creation, including many scoffers who've come to Christ. I'm not trying to drive them off. I'm trying to bring them to the Lord. Trust me on this one. But the uh, Bible says, Beware, lest any man spoil you with your philosophy and vain deceit. I get a little upset, I guess, when I see these people with their evil philosophy spoiling children that come through their class. So professors that teach evolution, I just don't have a lot of uh, patience with them. I'm sorry, okay? I think if I was going